Good afternoon. Today, I will talk about the incorporation, the registration of companies under the new regime, and also compounding of specified offences. First of all, about incorporation, there are six key changes: types of companies. Abolition of Memorandum of Association, Abolition of Par Value for Shares, One Natural Person as Director is Required, and Correspondence Address of Company Secretary in case it is a natural person. Only the Correspondence Address is needed. Then finally, Statutory Period for Delivery of consent to act as director of the incorporation. And now I will take you through them one by one. Types of companies. Eight types would be reduced to five. The first two are very well known. Private company limited by shares and public company limited by shares. If you want to incorporate any of these two, you need only to submit NC1 on the 3rd of March this year. You must use a new form in NC1. The other three types are company limited by guarantee without a share capital, profit unlimited company with a share capital, public unlimited company with a share capital. If you want to set them up now, actually there aren't too many of um, type 4 and 5. You use NC1G. New form and NC one G must be used with effect from third of March this year. You don't need to be too worried. This may be a new form, but what is required by the form is more or less the same. The major difference would be the six changes. I will offer further explanation in a minute. So now. After abolition of the memorandum, what is required to be submitted to us now, other than NNC1 and NNC1G? After the abolition of the memorandum, only one copy of Articles of Association is required. According to the subsidiary legislation, Cap 622H schedules 1, 2, and 3. The model articles prescribed in the company's notice are listed out here. Schedule 1 is for public companies limited by shares. Schedule 2 is for private companies limited by shares. And Schedule 3 is for companies limited by guarantee. The company's registry Register has also prepared some sample articles available for use at e-registry. We've also submitted them onto our website. Samples B, C and D are the same as the sample. Sample A has been prepared according to are the Schedule 2 details for private companies limited by shares. This is simply a simplified version. So you can see what type of company we are talking about and what the needs are. I must remind you of one thing. The sample does not include mandatory articles. What are these articles? Company name, members' liabilities, liabilities or contributions of members, capital share, 
and initial shareholdings. During incorporation, perhaps it is suggested that this number of shares should be issued, and every founder member has uh, purchased certain amount. We need to look at whether they have been paid up or not. So please remember to insert such information. As for the sample from our office has already been worked on so that you only need to fill in the necessary information. Another point I would like to remind you of, if you're preparing your own memorandum yourself and you do not choose to use certain provisions or even you want to amend certain provisions, you have to explain such changes in great details because in section 80 it says that if you do not adopt the provisions in the sample, if you don't specify this, then the provisions of the samples when applicable will continue to constitute the artist's article of association of the company. Abolition of the par value. In NNC, when the new form, what do you need to fill in? Without the par value, a share does not have nominal value, there's no authorized capital. So you just need to explain the class of shares, total number of shares proposed to be issued, total amount of share capital subscribed by founder members, whether they have been paid up or not. If the company issues more than one class of shares, in 5A, newly added 5A, they have to list out the relevant rights. But if you only issue one class of shares, you don't need to fill in this part. Founder member in NC1, you have to fill in the class of shares and number of shares purchased or subscribed by a certain director. But in a new form, in NC1, we require class of share, total number, currency, and total amount. And let's talk about the director under the new regime, section 457. Every private company must have at least one director who is a natural person. With effect from 3rd of March 2004, all applications lodged for incorporation of private companies under the new company's ordinance must comply with Section 457. The six month grace period will not apply. As for the company secretary under the new regime, if it is a natural person, she does not need to declare the address again. She can simply declare the correspondence address in Hong Kong. But under the new regime, it is still required that the company secretary, if it is a natural person, should normally reside in Hong Kong. Therefore, NNC1 should have been filled out and this point explained to us. As for statutory period for delivery of consent to act as director after incorporation, if the director of the company does not sign the consent to act on the incorporation form, the consent should be given in a form NNC3, which should be delivered to the registrar for registration not, let, not later than 15 days after the date of incorporation. What is different is that we're using a new form in NC3, but the content is more or less the same. We have also amended the 14 days into 15 days. 
Now, I would like to take you through deregistration under the new regime. Basically, there are three changes. First, under the current ordinance, only private companies can apply for deregistration. Under the new regime, however, the guarantee company can also apply for such deregistration. But you must pay attention to one thing. Section 749 bracket 2 says that certain number of companies cannot have the deregistration done. For example, authorized institutions as defined by the banking ordinance and an insurer as defined by the insurance company's ordinance. On the 3rd of March, that is the commencement date of the new company's ordinance, if you want to uh, apply for deregistration, you need to use MDR1. MDR1 compared to DR1, we you say now, equally, they require you to submit information, but there's been no major change. So why are we using the new form? Because under the new company's registration regime, the conditions for the registration has been added from three to six conditions. So for the time being, if you want to apply for deregistration, you must meet three conditions. First, all the members agree to the deregistration or the company has not yet commenced operation or there's no business carried on during the first three months or immediately after the application. There's no outstanding liabilities. Three new elements. Company is not a party to any legal proceedings. Company's assets do not consist of any immovable property situated in Hong Kong. If the company is a holding company, None of its subsidiary assets consists of any immovable property situated in Hong Kong. If you apply for deregistration for your clients, please remind them we have such new conditions. Please also remind them before they apply for deregistration, they need to properly arrange for their assets, including immovable assets. If a company is aware that it doesn't satisfy the registration requirements but still submits the application, it is an offence. According to the new regime, the penalty has been increased for knowingly or recklessly giving false and misleading information to the registrar in connection with a deregistration application, it is an offence. And there would be a fine of 300,000 Hong Kong and imprisonment for two years upon conviction on indictment, or fine of 100,000 and imprisonment for six months upon summary conviction. So we must look at what our clients are doing. As Madam has said, we have some uh, compounding of specified offences so as to encourage compliance and optimize the use of judicial resources. Section 899 and pass the registrar to compound at the discretion of the registrar specified offences. How is this done? When the registrar realises that a company may have violated certain specified offences, we would issue a notice on which we would have listed which offence has been committed. If the registrar does not mention 
the legal arrangements, for example, payment within a certain specified period of time, or where the offence is committed because of certain omissions, then within a sort of a specified period, all these things have to be done. Let's say a company has forgotten to submit the annual returns, there would be a fine involved. And you also need to submit the outstanding annual returns and all the relevant registration fees. We also have NCO1 that confirms acceptance of the conditions specified in the notice. Once the person signs this confirmation form NCO1 and pays the compounding fee and complies with the conditions specified in the notice, all the conditions must be met within a certain specified period. The registrar will not engage himself in prosecution action. If the company does not comply with all the conditions specified in the notice, however, the registrar still has the power to carry out prosecution. So what are such specified offences? You can find them in Schedule 7. These are just a few examples. For example, fail, failure to deliver consent to access director, failure to deliver uh, annual returns, failure to deliver annual returns and accounts of registered non-Hong Kong companies, failure to display the company name at registered office and business venue. The new provision only empowers the registrar to use his discretion to not prosecute certain offences, but the registrar can, according to individual situations surrounding a case, uh, carry on with prosecution. So what's best is to follow what is written inside the ordinance. That's all from me. Thank you very much.